Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. All right, I want to welcome you back today and appreciate the Lord Jesus for another privilege of getting to be with him. We're going to be taking you now again into our message concerning untempered mortar. And truly, children, Jesus is the hope of his people, whether you're a Jew or a Gentile. But now, to be honest with you, when somebody's trying to teach or preach us or bring us a, another doctrine outside of the gospel of Jesus Christ, well, that's what it means, want to build up a wall. And that wall represents a hope, but yet it is no hope. Because of the fact the Bible said they daubed that with untempered mortar. Now, they plastered it over. And if you're studied out, the word untempered means unsavory, whitewash. It's just no good, children. It's tasteless, and it will not benefit any people, any other doctrine outside of the gospel of Christ. And of course, with the Jews now, when Jesus gave his life on that cross, he did tear down the differences or the middle wall. And through the one gospel that he gave to the apostles, that's how we all build today upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. And I'm going to show a little more into this because... When you try to build a wall and then plaster that with the wrong teachings and the wrong doctrine, well, that wall will become a, a false hope because it's going to fall. And the Bible said great would be the fall of it. Now, we need to understand that truly, children, the only help for any people is this gospel that the apostles preach. And I'm going to tell you, as I've said before, if we don't teach the true God and eternal life to be Jesus Christ, then there's no way we can teach a gospel of Jesus Christ and teach it right because that means your spirit's not right. You see, we've got to understand that even the apostles in 1 John chapter 5, verse 20, they knew that they were of God and the whole world was lying in wickedness and John said, we know that the Son of God is come and given us an understanding, thank God, that we may know Him that is true and we're in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. And He said, this is the true God and eternal life. And He said, little children, keep yourselves from idols. So what we need to realize if we're not teaching the right God, there's no way we can teach the right doctrine. I'm sorry, you'll build up on a, a false foundation every time because Paul said other foundation can no man lay. Then that's already laid, which is Jesus Christ, and that's a foundation of the apostles and prophets. Now, if you remember, we read you in our last program about the, the bride, the lamb's wife. And she had a precious stone, and also, children, she had a wall. And it had 12 gates. On the east were three gates, on the north were three gates, on the south was three gates, and on the west. And at each of these gates now, there were the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. But also, it had 12 foundations. And written on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. So what I'm trying to tell you now, if we take a wall and smear that or daub that with the wrong mortar, children, it can't stand because if you, even if your natural cements and plasters is not fixed right, it'll always fall apart. Well, any other foundation and doctrine outside the doctrine that Jesus gave to the apostles, they can't help us. They can't affect a Christian if we don't have the truth. Children, it's time we open our Bible and understand. Now let me show you once again before I get into the book of uh, Galatians. And I want to especially show you concerning the two Jerusalems. And why is it important for you to recognize the true Jerusalem now? 
And don't get hurt at me, but there's a false hope being taught. And they're teaching now that the natural Middle East Jerusalem is the future place for God, and they're teaching that is the Holy Land. But now, children, when you begin to understand, now, no doubt they were promised that natural land. But that has nothing to do with making us holy in God. And a lot of you people, let me tell you what your leaders are doing today by satellite and televisions. They're pointing the mind of everybody toward the Middle East Jerusalem and trying to build up the same wall that the Jews are trying to build up without Christ. And they're daubing that with the wrong kind of mortar, children, and it's going to fall. Because Jesus in John 17, he prayed that prayer and said, Father, I have given unto them, the apostles, thy word, and they received them. And he said, I pray not for these only, but them also that will believe on me through their word. So you see, children, they're over here trying to compromise and build up with Jewish traditions and religions when we better be getting to the people the gospel because that's what it's going to take to save. There's no future salvation coming, children. Why we have life in this present world is the only chance we've got because the next coming of the Lord is the judgment. See? He appeared unto the, us the first time without sin unto, or the first time as sin. In other words, a body that was made sin for us but yet he knew no sin. He become a sacrifice. But we look for him a second time without sin unto salvation, which means he's not coming to save again. The gospel is your hope now. And outside of it, children, there is no hope. But listen to this because you're seeing it being built up again in the world. Listen to verse 9 of the book of Ezekiel 13 one more time. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. That's the true church. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Because, even because, they have seduced my people. See? Saying, peace. And there was no peace. One built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. And God said, Say unto them which daubed it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and you, O great hailstones, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the wall is fallen. Now see, that's a false hope. Shall it not be said unto you, Where is the daubing? Wherewith you have daubed it. See, one build a wall, but another comes along and builds that with untempered mortar. Now children, listen to me. The natural Jews, the only way they can have God at all to this day is through the gospel of Jesus Christ, the apostles and the prophets of this Bible. The only way you Gentiles, us nations, U.S. or any other nation can have God is the same way we all have to build upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Now, as far as the natural Jerusalem, they're wanting their city, they're wanting their temple back and all of this, and they're building up a wall and a way for them children that will not prosper in God. You can't go back into the law, neither can you go into blood offerings and sacrifices and God honor that and bring salvation. He'll never do it. Children, all them days are over and Christ is the end of the law. And yet they're wanting to establish and build back the temple. <clears throat> and then we've got them out here today daubing all of that with untempered mortar that will not prosper us. Now, let's go, if you will, to your Bible, to the book of Galatians. Turn with me right quick. To the book of Galatians chapter 4. And today I want you to li listen a little bit of who's in bondage.
even to this day. Now go with me to verse 19 of the book of Galatians chapter 4. Paul said, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ, <clears throat> be formed in you. For I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Tell me you that desire to be under the law. Now notice this. Do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. Notice that. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was the promise. Now Sarah was the free woman. Hagar, the Egyptian woman that Sarah told Abraham to go unto, that was their bond lady. And see, she had a son by both of them. Or he did rather. Abraham had a son by Hagar and also by Surah. Now, here's the meaning of all of this. What's this? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. See, God didn't tell him to do this. But he of the free woman was promised, which things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which genders the bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, Paul said, and is in bondage with her children. Now, that's the son of Agar representing. See, this literally happened. Abraham did have two sons. One by the Egyptian woman and the other by Sarah. Of course, Isaac was the promised child from Sarah. God give it. But this represented the two covenants. One in bondage and the other one free. Now, the law was weak through the flesh. But it helped the people until Christ come. And then Jesus established the new covenant. And the only way you can be free and even in that new covenant is by the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. Because the Bible said where the Spirit of the Lord is, thank God there is liberty. Now, watch you two Jerusalems here. Watch this. Verse 25. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, now look at this, which is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry thou that travailest not. For the desolate has many more children than she which has a husband. Listen to that. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then, he that was born after the flesh, come on, persecuted him that was born after the spirit, and he said, even so is it now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture, cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. And so Paul said, So then, brethren, we are not the children of the bondwoman, but of the free. So what we've got to understand, we are a called people and chosen. And we're called unto liberty or freedom to serve God. And the only way we can be a part of God's Jerusalem now is by the Holy Ghost. Let's go prove this out because these are things, children, that we need to know because the day's approaching us and we need to really get our mind off of everything but the Jerusalem and the Christ above you. Now go with me to this 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews right quick. Now you can read it all, but let me show you something here. In verse about 18. Now, this is representing you two covenants here. Verse 18 of Hebrews 12. 
For you're not come unto the mount, see, that might be touched and that burn with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. Notice that. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Now he said, you're not come to that mountain. We're not come to that. But, verse 22, you are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. Now, is that the one I've been reading you about that Paul called, or John called the bride the lamb's wife and it had a wall great and high, one wall? And that wall was square because it had three gates on each, north, south, east, and east and west. And it also had 12 foundations. Now, children, remember where this Jerusalem is because John said this elder's said to John, angels rather, said to John, come up hither and I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And John was carried away into the spirit into a great and high mountain. That mountain was a power of God. And he got to see that holy city. So if we're going to see that city and enter into that city, you're going to have to enter in through the hope and the entrances that God has established through the apostles and the prophets. As God is my helper. Now children, we need to all pray for the Middle East. The whole world even is in trouble now. But Paul said, My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be safe, for I bear them record. They have a zeal of God, and they do now, but not according to knowledge. They being ignorant of God's righteousness and they're going about to establish their own righteousness. He said they have not submitted unto the righteousness of God. Now watch this. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. So what are they wanting to do now? They want right where that dome of the rock is because they believe that's the temple mount in sight. And they want to establish and build back the law. And they're wanting their priests. They're wanting their sacrificial offerings. And they're wanting to build that temple back and go back into offerings and sacrifices, which God said will have no pleasure. He won't have any pleasure in them. And the sad part is, here most of the American so-called leaders of Christianity is teaching that they're the holy people. And all they're doing is building up a wall for them and promising them, promising them a peace and a hope in the future. When their hope and peace right now, if they turn to the Lord, God will lift that off their eyes, that veil is in Jesus Christ. Honey, can't you understand that when he died on that cross, he tore down that middle wall. There is no blindness out there unless you want to be blinded. Unless the God of this world blinds you. We've got to understand when Jesus died, he tore down that middle wall. But differences between the Jew and Gentile. Now, children, listen to me. Jesus came to his own. And his own received him not. But as many as received him, he did give them power to become the sons of God. Now they weren't blinded as long as they received him and his name. You think we ain't blinded in America in our so-called Christianity movement when we've got over 20, 100, 27 or more different 100 faith out here that's supposed to represent Christ and one's a building up a wall and somebody coming along putting a doctrine here and smiting it, smearing it and everything else. Honey, our people even today is confused. We're just about in the world of Babylon, but God's not the author of her. See, he's not the author of confusion. And other foundation can no man lay 
then that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Okay, now, Paul said, but you're come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, look at this, to the general assembly. General assembly means the overall church, and I'm not talking about Rome. And church of the firstborn, that's Jesus' church which are written in heaven, thank God and to God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Honey, we're not in an empty place. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Children, we need to heed the word of God. See that you refuse not him that speak. For if they escape not who refused him that spoke on earth, much more shall they not escape if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven. Now, watch this. Read it all when you get time. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised saying, I, yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And Paul said in this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as the things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Now listen to the next part. Wherefore we, that's Christians, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably in reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Now children, we need to recognize the hour we're living in. As God is my helper, we're in a world that's doing exactly like Israel did. Given over to idolatry by denying Jesus. And one is a building up a wall, a hope. And others are smearing it or daubing it, whitewashing it with untempered mortar. That's what that means. They're building walls and putting all this plaster and mixing it wrong. And God said it will fall. Children, as God is my helper, outside of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we cannot prosper, we shall fall. But as long as we're heeding the word of God, God's promised us, children, eternal life. Now, listen to this. We read you that the lamb had a wife. And John seen her in the spirit and called her the holy city, New Jerusalem. Coming down from God out of heaven. And this woman, thank God, if you'll read the 21st chapter, has a pure river of water of life. And also, where's your tree of life now? It's not on earth as far as in Eden, but it's in us now. And also, it's represented the Holy Ghost too as a river of water of life. And Bible said on either side of this river was there the tree of life, one tree. And that tree bare twelve manner of fruits, and in fruits of that tree yielded every year. What's he talking about? Honey, the apostles' doctrine is for the healing of the nations. As God is my helper, if we're going to eat of the tree of life, we're going to have to partake of the word of God. Because as God is my helper, of the foundation can no man lay than what's already laid. But yet there's a devil out here transformed as apostles of Christ, also as an angel of light, and he set up many ways to try to hinder people. But children, study your Bible. Because even though there's multitudes of ways now, but wide is that gate, broad is that way, Jesus said, that'll lead to destruction. And many there be that go in thereat. Now, go with me right quick. Let me show you something out of the book. Read it in your Bible. The book of 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. And let me show you what the Bible teaches about God tempered His body. He set it up, children, on the day of Pentecost. His church. The way He wanted. And don't you know that it's His name, thank God, 
That's the safe place of the church. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and thank God the righteous runneth into it, and they are safe. Now, go with me right quick, because we've been reading you about untempered mortar. And believe me, there's prophets, so-called, so-called apostles, and, and so-called evangelists and pastors, and children, they're working for the other fellow. And they're building up a hope or a wall for the people, and others coming along and daubing that with untempered and the question the prophet said would be asked where is the daubing wherewith you daubed where's that doctrine that caused this thing to fall children listen to me any other doctrine outside of Jesus Christ you will fall we can't stand because you're coming now to God's fiction to settle it all. He's coming for a bride that's got herself ready. Now, go with me let me show you something here out of the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 because the church today with the members of it and the gifts is how God's attempting his church. Now, you've got a member, there's others out here that's with untempered mortar. Well, children, I'm sorry, but I see, see my time's about up for this part. But be sure to stay with me because I want to show you that we need to set our hope in the Word of God because children outside of it, your wall will not stand. You can have a hope, a hope in you, but if it's not the hope of the gospel, then I'm afraid we're in very dangerous grounds. So be sure to stay with me in our next program. Write us in any prayer requests, and we appreciate all of God's people. If you can help us on the programs, we need it. And also get on our website, and it's got our schedules. And if we're going to be anywhere, we'll let you know. So we do love the Lord, and thank God for the meetings we are in. So God bless you. I'll see you again in Jesus' name. Amen. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to The Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you.